curious if the White House and the president still stand behind his comment that he's never been involved and has never even uh, spoken to his son about his business. So I've been, I've been asked this question a million times. The answer is not going to change. The answer remains the same. The president ha was never in business with his son. I just don't have anything else to add. That's a new answer. Uh, there you got the White House saying President Biden was never in business with his son. This, as a former associate, is expected to testify on Monday behind closed doors and reportedly will claim that Hunter put his dad on the phone via speakerphone with overseas clients at least two dozen times. Cash Patel served as deputy director of national intel under Donald Trump. He joins us right now from the D.C. area. Cash, good morning to you. Morning, Steve. Thanks for having me. So what do you make of that uh, that change? You know, for a very long time, it all started with a Fox reporter asking Joe Biden, you ever talk to your son? And he goes, no, I've mm -hmm. never talked to my son about his overseas business dealings. Now, obviously, they've got this guy who's going to say, yeah, he talked all the time to his overseas business partners, but he was never in business. Why change in the story, Cash? <laughs> Well, look, Steve, as a former federal prosecutor and public defender, whether it's a witness for the defense or prosecution, when they change their story once, you've landed a blow against credibility in front of the jury. And here the jury is the American public in the world because the witness is President Biden. And he hasn't changed his story once or twice or three times. It's at least four times, thanks to the dogged pressure and questioning from uh, your White House reporter pool. Um, the White House has been forced to address this issue. And here's the kicker. If the FBI and DOJ knew for certainty that Joe Biden had absolutely nothing to do with Hunter Biden and China and Ukraine and Burisma and all that other stuff, they would have definitively come out and said so. They have been deafeningly silent since all the whistleblower testimony has come in, the documents have surfaced. Joe Biden's got a real problem here and his White House is lying to the world. Uh, you know, Cash, uh, we ran a soundbite about 45 minutes ago of Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on last night with Sean Hannity, and he was talking a little bit about, given the fact that there is this mounting evidence, and in particular that 1023 mm -hmm. that was released by Chuck Grassley last week. I know that's completely unverified. It has not been verified. Uh, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it provides a roadmap for investigators to go ahead and start to right. try to connect the dots. As, as uh, the House calls in Devin Archer, Hunter's uh, former business partner next week, I know you used to work on the House Oversight uh, Committee back in the day. Uh, how would you approach that? Mm -hmm. So look, here's the critical piece about witnesses, and you're right, most of that isn't verified, but there's new reporting that the FBI did actually verify some of the uh, substantiated claims in that document. What I would do is sit the witness down to say, hey, here are all the other documents we have, and in order to do it successfully, you have to come in with the FBI having already returned service on process on the subpoena to get the amount of payments, to get the recordings, to get the confidential human sources that were involved, to get the targets of the investigation. And once you have all of that, then you can put the witness in the seat and say, hey, tell us about the dealings. Tell us about this transaction. Mm -hmm. Because Devin Archer, for those that don't know, is basically Hunter Biden's twin. They were uh, Burisma board buddies together. They were in Rosemont Seneca. They were in the Chinese private equity deals all together. Wherever Hunter was doing a transaction, right. Devin Archer was there. It's like having the videotape. It's a critical piece of evidence, and I hope they get it right. Yeah. And Cash, the final thing, uh, Easel Street, uh, not Easy Street, Easel Street, uh, you know, Hunter is now an artist, uh, and supposedly the White House lawyers <laughs> set up this thing where Hunter will never know who the don who the buyers are. Turns out he sold this stuff for over one point three million dollars, according to Business Insider. And one of the people who bought it was a uh, Democratic donor who wound up on a big commission appointed by his father. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a ruse. It's totally unethical. It's probably unlawful. I worked in the White House. You've been around the White House. Just think if I was painting paintings about the Baghdadi raid when I was leading um, counterterrorism for Donald Trump and selling it. And then I said, oh, well, the White House told me I won't know who bought it. So nothing to see here, even though I pocketed $7 million. The fake news mafia would have a field day. It's a double standard, two-tier system of justice. Maybe they should give that money to charity instead of pocketing it for themselves and claiming how poor they continuously are. Well, let's see what happens. Cash Patel, thank you very much sir for joining us from dc thanks so much i'm steve Ducey. i'm brian kilmeade and i'm ainsley Earhart. and click here to subscribe to the fox news youtube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis